We are standing here in front of the Zurich wine exhibition, which actually happens in the boats behind me. Now, when you visit these wine exhibitions, the classes you're going to get are very simple. It's either red, white, or rosé. But how is it, is it with investors? What are the types of investors out there? Well, I have a small advantage because a lot of people come to me with their investment ideas. And I can identify five types of investors. First, there's the disengaged. The person that says, I don't want to deal with this. I leave my money on my accounts. Maybe I give it to some asset manager. Maybe I buy some insurance. This is what I did when I started out investing. And it was a big mistake. When I calculated how much I lost, I was really, really angry with me. And I decided to change. Now, what are the other options? The disengaged option is actually the, the most prevalent, the most often, you know, the most popular option. Most of my friends are like this. The second most popular options are the real estate guys. They say real estate is where I make my money because real estate is solid and there's something there even if the price drops. Now the problem there is something else. These days real estate is so expensive that you have to take on debt. Now when you take on 80% of debt on your real estate and the real estate market dives by 10%, half of your property is wiped out. And don't forget, even in Switzerland in the 90s, the real estate market dropped on average 30%. So when you focus your retirement savings on real estate, you take big, big risks that you're not aware of because it's been 20 years since the last market correction. Now let's go to the third category. The third category are entrepreneurs. Some of them are actually back there on the wine ship selling their wines. Now the entrepreneur is the one that says, nobody is going to make so much money with my money than myself. And he's right. If you want to make money, you have to focus it on your own entrepreneurial activities. I do it as well. I have my own company for the past 18 years. But the problem there is, you put all eggs in one basket. All the risk is in your company. If it goes bad, everything is gone. For that reason, I decided to start investing into other companies over time so that when my strategy doesn't work out, at least there is money in other companies. And don't forget, especially entrepreneurs take more risk than they should. So the risk in your own company is actually quite high. Now we come to the last two categories. These are people that invest their money in the markets because they're aware if they don't do anything, they lose a lot of money. If they invest in real estate, they have a big risk if the real estate market turns. And if they keep everything in their own company, the risk is even bigger. Now, people invest money in the stock markets can be put into two categories. The first one is the trader. You may have one or two friends, not many, because there are not many traders out there. Traders spend hours every day identifying the stock that makes the most return. When the financials come out each quarter, they may go to their mountain cottage and spend two or three weeks just reading the new financial reports. This is not something you want to do. Most people don't like that. And as a matter of fact, their chances of success are even lower because the entrepreneur at least produces something. So there's more in the world after the entrepreneur has made their business, but the stock investor doesn't produce anything. It's a zero sum game. When they really want to have 
an above average return with stock investing, it means that they have to take it from someone else. The chances are really bad. So don't worry about the traders, even though they are the ones that make most noise at the stock exchanges. Now we come to the final, the final category. These are people that buy stocks or buy funds in the stock market and stay in for the long term. This is where I ended up eventually. I started out with buying funds. I bought ETFs, index funds, because it's a cheap and easy way to be spread out in the stock market. But then I realized index funds are not really what they say they are. Let's take an example. The Standard Poor's 500 index is the biggest index in the United States. It's the biggest index worldwide. But 50% of the stocks are in just three industries, technology, health, and finance. Now, half of the United States is not technology, health, and finance. We have a complete overexposure towards industries that want to be in the financial markets. The same is actually true in Switzerland. As a matter of fact, when you choose ETFs, you still have to make up your mind which one to buy, which at the end comes down to a stock selection. Most indices are dominated by a few large stocks. For that purpose, I switched to direct stock investing because there I can actually focus on the companies that I like. But not only that, if I invest for the long haul, 30 years, I save 30 years of fund management costs. And even though index funds have low fund management costs, it doesn't make any sense to waste that money. These, I think, are the five investors that are most important, like the three types of wine, red, white, and rosé. It's the disengaged, the maturity, it's the real estate investor, this is the second most important category, at least in Switzerland and probably also in the United States. Then there's the entrepreneur, who has to be careful to invest broader. Then there is the trader, who makes a lot of noise in the press and at the stock market, but there are only a few. And then there is the long-term direct stock investor, who has two options, either index funds or direct investing, how we do it at Omamot. My decision is to invest directly in stocks, today. I wish you good luck with your decision.